Hello everyone, I am Left, and today, welcome back to my next episode in the series of Vainglory in Depth. Now, in today's episode, we're going to be covering everybody's favorite insta-locked laner, Saw. Now, Saw has made a huge resurgence in, this la in these last few patches, seeing tons of competitive use, strategies built around him, all sorts of stuff like that, and he is a very powerful and dangerous weapon to be used in casual and ranked now weapon or crystal as we have seen in competitive throughout NA and EU. This um, episode is going to be focusing on weapon power. If you guys want to, I could make one about crystal power as well in the future. So before we get into Saw's skills, let me just tell you about his perk. Saw's perk is spin up, as most of you probably know. Each basic attack he uses gives him one stack of spin up, and each stack of spin up up to 12 max gives him more attack speed, but cuts his movement. This is basically just what makes Saw Saw. He's an, um, basically a mobile, fast shooting turret when he's fully spun up, and he just moves like a regular hero when he's all, all spun down. So essentially, Saw, you there's just so many ways to play him, and so many ways that you have to play him perfectly if you want to do well in ranked. So, Almost to the end of this introduction here, let's get right into Saw's first skill, which is going to be Roadie Run, here in the next 5 seconds or so. So, Saw's first skill is Roadie Run, as you can see on the screen. He leaps forward, gains a sprinting move speed bonus, and shanks his target with his knife. He drops his gun for this, and you can't shoot. He also loses all stacks of spin up during this ability can be used to close distances and oh it also um can it also deals extra damage per opponent's missing health so it's an execution and it, it can also travel over walls saw's second skill is suppressing fire where he shoots a continuous stream of bullets in a target direction heavily slowing enemies in its path and also dealing damage this makes him immobile, and it can be very useful for finishing off fleeing enemies or just sort of giving you all your spin-up stacks, because it does that too. So it's a very valuable tool in a fight, but you don't want to use it at the wrong time. Saw's third skill and his ultimate is Mad Cannon, where he shifts his gun from shooting bullets to explosive rounds. He, can, he gets 5, 7, and 9 of these for each level, 1, 2, and 3. They deal extra crystal damage, splash damage, and percentage on, and damage on percentage of missing health. They also fire twice, I think, as slow as regular rounds, and give two spin up per stack instead of the regular one. So let's look at some gameplay clips with Saw. We just destroyed this turret, but Glaive is going to rocket out of this bush in a couple seconds and punt me into the turret there. So let's stop it right here as I have a couple options. Since I just used Suppressing Fire, my roadie run is off cooldown, Glaive is sort of low, and I'm going to have full spin up as soon as, I'm come, as soon as I come out of this stun. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn my gun onto Glaive, shoot a couple shots, and then finish him off with the knife. In this next fight, it's a 3v3 here, and we're just kind of going through the drifting dark. Samuel is pretty low already, and Kestrel is about to hit him with one shot, one kill. So Samuel is obviously going to be running away. He, I think he's going to get a fountain from Lyra. So what do you think we can do to hit him down before he gets that fountain? If you guessed shank him, you're right. So Samuel is going to be struck by one shot, one kill. He's going to get the fountain from Lyra as he tries to reflex block me, but he's too late. Percentage missing health is too much, and I get it. This next clip goes to show how well Finn pairs with Saw. So, Finn has just hooked Samuel in here, and he was just way late or off, or maybe he just doesn't have a reflect block. So, mostly, Saw enemies can just kind of run away from Saw when he spun up, but not when you have Finn. Um, I'm just gonna kind of whittle him down with stutter stepping, get my spin up, and eventually kill him. Now, that would have been better if I would have had, like, um full spin up, but I didn't, so I just had to stutter step. As this next fight breaks out, I noticed that Glaive is probably going to be trying to afterburn up to me, so I'm going to use suppressing fire just kind of randomly down into the bush to deter him from suppressing firing up to me and potentially using an Atlas Pauldron. So now that I have full spin up stacks and we missed the hook on Finn, or Samuel, so I'm going to wait out the Oblivion and just start to kind of do my damage to Glaive and Lyra. So you notice that I'm doing a lot of weapon damage here, but no one's really kind of targeting me. 
This is going to allow me to stack my breaking point very highly. As you can see, I don't, I can't tell what it is down there. I think it might be 11 already, and we're not even, we're not even, we're not even getting started yet. So, I'm going to just kind of cut down Samuel and eventually end up finishing Lyra off with the shank. That was, or that damage we did all to Samuel was thanks to the breaking point. And we're almost going to get Glaive here, but he makes a nice punt onto Kestrel. So that fight is a win because of breaking point. Next fight, I'm going to give you some build tips. Stack two reflex blocks on Saw every time. Well, I mean, you don't really need it when you're playing Crystal, but when you're playing weapons, stack two reflex blocks. You see here, I use the Crucible to block Oblivion for my whole team, not just me. And it's just so good to have two reflex blocks on Saw because you're immobile. You're always going to be the brunt of the CC, and just two reflex blocks allows you to just keep on firing no matter what they try to throw at you. So as this unfreezes here, we're going to just kind of push onto the Kraken. We get the Fountain for some reason from Fan Warhorn. We're going to just kind of tear through the other team here, get down that turret. Kestrel hits the one shot onto the turret, actually. Um, Samuel just can't do enough with his um, Drifting Dark, and we're just going to kill Lyra, and that's going to be it for that clip. Next clip is pretty simple. It's only a minute and 55 into the game, but Kestrel is just so low. And it's just so tempting to shank her, and we are actually just going to get the shank here, because I wouldn't have gone for this if I'd, she had energy, because she would have just active camo, but she had no energy, so that's just a free and easy kill for Saw in the early game. Next clip here, I put a scout trap in the middle lane to deal with Ataka, but Kestrel runs over it. Now she's just so low, so I go in for the shank, but she, um, but she active camos. Now I run over the active camo, but not into turret range. So we're going to have to do some stutter stepping forward here if we're going to have to kill Kestrel. So watch as, I how to watch as I show how to stutter step forward, get the kill on Kestrel, only take one turret shot in the process. In this next clip, we're just kind of doing our thing, pushing the lane onto Kestrel, and a wild Kashka appears. So right here I'm thinking, wow, she's going to ult me, I don't have a reflex block, I'm done for. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to be really, really, really quick with our reflexes and with where we put our knife. Depending on where I shank Koshka from here, that's going to be where we're going back to. So we're just going to shank Koshka really quick before she can ult us backwards. And instead of going straight into Kestrel and the turret, we go backwards to safety. This next fight is just an example of why you never overextend with Saw. I get way too greedy, I think that I am, I, I just feel like I'm Crystal Saw and I'm gonna have that really long length with my, um, roadie run and I just don't have it, so I end up right in front of the turret, Kestrel runs away and I get promptly collapsed on by the other team. In this next fight we're defending against the Kraken and I think that they're gone, but I guess they're not. So right here. What I'm gonna have to do is, um, well, I'm maimed now from, um, what is it, from Atlas Pauldron. Kashka's jumping straight onto me, and I'm just gonna have to just, like, chug it out of there with my boots, and then I'm also, I'm actually gonna be able to finish Taka off with Suppressing Fire and a turret shot. And I also am able to tank one shot, one kill, so that is good. That's just how you stand your ground with Saw. It would have been even better if I had Rody run up, but boots were enough to finish the job. In this fight, I'm going to be, um, like, basically just sitting in the corridor, and I, you see as I kill Koshka there with one of my, um, shells, I'm fully spun up, and now I am just gonna lose all my spin-up stacks and go chase after that Kestrel kill. There's probably an active camo there, but I don't care. She gets stunned by Quibble, the double kill for me, and this just goes to show how, like, Saw can do so much damage when you keep him away from the action and let him just come right into the fight when he needs to. In the final gameplay clip here, we're pushing with the Kraken, I'm not spun up at all, and the enemies want a fight. So right off the bat, I get maimed by Taka on the Atlas Pauldron, which means I've got no attack speed for the next five or so seconds. So what we're gonna do here is pretty intricate of a maneuver. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, bounce off of Taka, or I'm just gonna run back with the shank, gather my stacks again with suppressing fire. As you can see in the corner, my Alice Pauldron is gonna wear off. Um, Finn is gonna keep them in place with the quibble, and right as my Atlas Pulgin wears off, my Suppressing Fire will wear off, and I'll have all my stacks again. 
So now I hold my ground as I as I am just kind of going onto them. Both Taka and Kashgar are low. Kestrel has no interest in me though. So now that both of my adversaries have appeared again, Kashka is low, Taka is low, and I um I don't have a breaking point in this game, but I'm spun up pretty good and I'm doing a lot of damage. I also have my shells out, which do damage on missing health, and we are just gonna be able to kill both of them right there with the help of Finn, and this actually wins us the game. So hopefully you enjoyed the gameplay clips and found them helpful. Let's get into some building and drafting guides for Saw. When you're drafting a Saw in a ranked match, there are some very good and very bad scenarios that you will pick Saw in. I'm not going to cover every hero here, just some of the more popular ones we've been seeing in ranked lately. So first off, let's start with Lyra. Lyra is, as a roam on the other team, very, very easy to beat for a Saw. Lyra has to be close up to hit the full effects of her Bright Bulwark, and even then, Saw has to, all the Saw has to do is stand still. Now, if the Lyra decides to go lane Crystal Power, Saw is basically a free win. Um, she has a way longer range than you, she can reliably land all the damage of her Imperial Sigil on you. So roam Lyra, yes. CP Lyra, no. Make sure they don't try to flip it on you. Now let's move on from Lyra to Jewel. So if the enemy Jewel is going weapon, Jewel did get a buff in the last patch so you might see her a little bit more. Enemy Jewel, weapon, good for Saw. Je weapon Jewel has to be close enough to land Thunderstrike and then she'll have to turn around and you can hit her exposed area. Enemy Crystal is death for Saw. You used to pressing fire, you're going to get beamed and you are going to take the full force of the beam. Unless you have like a perfect roam with Crucible, Fountain, etc. Also, if you're not perfect with the reflex block, you will get stomped on. So CP Jewel is a big no. Next, let's talk about Finn. Finn goes incredibly well with Saw on um, just on your team as your support, and he's pretty easy to play against uh, as Saw as well. All you really have to do with Saw against Finn is block Force to Cord, and if you have good enough reflexes, you'll be able to get it every time. If you can't get it every time, just practice and you will be able to destroy Finn as a Saw. He's basically a free breaking point stacker if you have him on the enemy team playing Saw. So that is pretty much it for Finn, and now let's move on to Sky in the next couple of seconds here. I probably didn't edit this correctly. But let's move on to Sky. Weapon Sky, kind of non existent against Saw, not really that great, so I didn't even put it on there, but enemy CP Sky will destroy Saw. Her just continuous stream of damage, like right in front of her with Ford Barrage, will destroy you. She can easily land her death from above right on top of you, and she can Surrey Strike straight forward to just hit you with the missiles 100% of the time unless you try to lose all your stacks on the way. Don't play Saw into CP Sky if you can help it. Next, let's talk about Vox. An enemy CP Vox will absolutely destroy Saw in the lane. You will be bullied into the, like you will be bullied back to your turret the entire time in the early game. Weapon Vox is an easy win for Saw, um, unless you get starved early game somehow. But if you're playing, if you see that the enemy is probably going to be going that or is probably going to be doing CP on that Vox, just don't pick Saw ever. Just after Vox's resonance bounce buffs, just Saw is totally unplayable against a CP Vox. So now let's move on to our last hero, Celeste here. Starve her before she hits level 8 or you will lose. Um, if you can get Celeste out of her comfort zone before she overdrives Heliogenesis, you can win the game. But if you fail to do that before she gets that increased range, she will just drop bombs on you from out of your basic attack range for the entire rest of the game. So you have to hit your window when you're playing against a Celeste, and that window is levels 1 through 7. So, not all the heroes I know, but let's get into some build tips now. If you guys have questions about how other heroes work with Saw and counter him and such, just comment down below and I can respond to you. So, some build tips for Saw, I'm not going to be putting anything up on the screen here, just listen to my voice and I'll tell you all about it. So, when you're building weapon power with Saw, you can go one of two routes. You can go sustain or you can go, like, burst crit. Now, you probably don't think of burst when you think of Saw, but the build you saw me using in the second game... Serpent's Mask, Sor Sorrow Blade, and Tyrant's Monocle is a pretty good one for crit. You can even get a second Tyrant's Monocle if you have a ton of gold and you're not getting hit a lot, but you always still want to have those double reflex blocks like, I, like you saw me have. Next is the Sustain one. You can go Serpent's Mask, Breaking Point, and then you can either do go into some crit or maybe even a Bone Saw if they have a ton of armor. 
Serpent Mask Breaking Point is the core. As you saw me using in the first gameplay, it allowed me to really stack it up against Samuel and Glaive, and it would do immense damage if I wasn't focused early in the fight, which usually didn't happen due to my repositioning with my roadie run and such. So that's going to be it for today's video, you guys. Thank you for all the support. I hope you really found this useful. Share it around. Um, I'd love to get more views and subscribers. I mean, who wouldn't? So that's all, guys. I'll see you next time. Comment down below what hero you want me to do next. And I'm out.